Play ball! Play ball with Babe Ruth! Play ball with the Navy! The United States Navy brings you the adventures of Babe Ruth. And here to tell you about the immortal Babe is the man who knew him so well, his pal, the popular sports reporter, Steve Martin. The long smoldering feud between Tim Daly, the umpire, and Babe Ruth was bound to explode sometime. And when it did, the riot was heard round the world, and Daly and the big fellow faced death. We'll bring you the exciting story in just a moment. But first, a highly important message from Jackson Beck. Come in, Jack. Okay, Steve, and thanks. Before Steve Martin gets started with this adventure of Babe Ruth, I'd just like to ask every young fellow listening a very practical, down-to-earth question. What are you getting out of life? Making money? Got a lot of friends and an interesting, satisfying job with the future? A chance for advancement? A retirement plan at a relatively early age? If you haven't got all those things, you should be extremely interested in what the United States Navy offers as a career. First of all, as a Navy man, you'll be part of the greatest fleet in the world. You'll have an interesting job with a chance to become a really valuable specialist in any one of the many Navy skills, because it'll be taught you to perfection. You'll have a chance for rapid advancement, for the Navy believes in helping good men rise to the top. And your Navy pay is always there. It's security. And when you remember that the Navy also feeds and clothes and houses you and pays your doctor bills, it's more security than you can get in civilian life. And it's security for a long time to come. For under the Navy's liberal retirement plan, you can retire after a few short years and have a guaranteed life income. So if you're over 17 and not getting what the Navy offers, it's only good sense to think about the Navy as a career. You'll find that the officer in charge of your local U.S. Navy recruiting office is a friendly man ready to help you solve your problem. Why not see him right away? Now, back to Steve Martin and the adventures of Babe Ruth. The Yankees and Detroit Tigers were in a dogfight for the pennant. And when they opened a crucial series in New York, the players and fans were in a lather. Tim Daly, the ex-pitcher, was umpiring behind the plate. And when he called a sour third strike on the Babe in the fifth inning and killed a Yankee rally, the big fella threw his cap What's on the, the ground. What's the matter with your eyes, Tim? That pitch was six inches wide. It was right over. It was way outside, way out here. What are you trying to do to me? Get I call it a strike. Now quit beeping, big shot, and beat it. Not before I give you the name of my eye doctor. I said get going, Babe. I'm not taking any lip off you. Now it's about time I gave you some. You've been calling them against me all along, and I know why. You can't forget Shut how you think about and scram. You can't talk that way to me. Get off the field. You're out of the game. Babe, the first time in two years you've been thrown out of a game. And you have to pick today. The Yanks might have won if you stayed in. No other umpire would have tossed me out for what I said, Steve. But Tim Daly has been gunning for me for a long time. I used to pin his ears back when he pitched against me, you know. Yes, I know. But... And he's never forgiven me for hitting that home run off him in the ninth inning a couple of years ago. He had a no-hitter working up to then. Yes, I remember. So you figure he's calling them sour on you because of that, huh? I know he is. Mm -hmm. Can I quote you on that, babe? Oh, no, of course not. I'd sound like an alibi artist. But I'll tell you this, Steve. This series with Detroit might mean the pennant. And if Tim Daly calls them wrong on me again, there's going to be trouble. The big fellow wasn't fooling. The trouble came the next afternoon, but not quite the way he figured it. The fans were plenty sore at Tim Daly for tossing their SWAT king off the premises the day before. And the minute Tim came on the field, they opened up on him. Hey, Daly! Hey, uh, where's your fight, Lutchett? The fans kept riding Daly, but he was umpiring at first base this time, and he didn't really set them off until the eighth inning, when the blow-off came. The Yankees were trailing two to one, but after two out, Sewell singled. The big fella came up then and blasted the first pitch far out into the lower right field stands. It was up against the steel girdle with a white stripe on it that marked the foul line. The big fella started to trot around the bases while the crowd went crazy. But just as he came to first base, Tim Daly rushed to him and waved him back. Daly was yelling that it was a foul ball. Foul ball! Say that again, Tim! 
I said it was a foul ball. Hit the girder an inch on the foul side of the white line. An inch on the foul side? You mean you could see that inch from here? From over 300 feet away? I'm sure I saw it was foul. Go back up there and hit. Why, you dirty robber. You That's get... enough. You're out of the game. <laughs> That did it. The fans went completely haywire and began throwing everything they could lay their hands on at Tim Daly. Seat cushions, hats, fruit, pop bottles came flying out on the field. I saw one of the bottles hit Daly on the head, but he kept walking until he came to the Yankee bench. Then he keeled over into the dugout. How's Tim Daly, Steve? Where is he? The trainer's patching him up, babe. He's got a nasty cut, but it's nothing serious. Oh, good. Don't go near him, though. He's raving mad at you. He blames you for what happened. Oh, he's right. It was my fault. Your fault? What are you talking about? Steve, I just saw two boys who were sitting near that girder. They say the ball hit on the foul side of the stripe, just like Tim said. Yes, you'll find plenty of others will swear it hit fair, though. Oh, maybe, Steve, but if some say it landed foul, then Tim was entitled to call it either way, and I should have taken it. The umpire's boss on the field. I took advantage of my big name, though, to start a small-sized riot. Now, you know, when that happens to an umpire, Steve, when he loses control, he gets the gate fast. Now, look, babe, don't tell me you care if Tim Daly loses his job. Not after the way he treated you. Yeah, call me a sucker if you want, Steve. But this started as a private scrap between Tim and me. And now it's me plus 100,000 fans against Tim. Steve, I'm worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Because unless I'm dead wrong, plenty is going to happen. The big fellow called the turn again. Plenty happened the next day, and it started happening the minute the umpires walked out on the field to start the game. Tim Daly, adhesive plaster on his head, brought up the rear. Crowd started to boo. And then some leather long fan in the stands behind third base started the wolf howl. And pretty soon, everybody took it up. Tim Daly had guts, I'll say that for him. He stood his ground and motioned the other umpires to get the game started. The players started out on the field. They turned fast and went back to their dugouts when the barrage started out of the stands like hail. Rotten eggs, tomatoes, cabbages, and more pop bottles. In a moment, the field was a mess, and that chant kept on. I worked my way down to the field to where Babe and the little Miller, manager Huggins, were standing near home plate. When I reached the plate, the big fellow was saying... I gotta stop this hug before somebody gets killed. You! How can you stop it, Babe? All these fans are my friends. If I go into the stands... Into the stands? Are you nuts, Babe? Why, you'll get murdered. Oh, I won't. There's a couple of jerks up there behind third base who seem to be the ringleaders. I'm gonna shut them up. The rest will be easy. No, Babe! Babe, come back here! Babe, you're crazy! Don't go up there! Hug and I tried to grab the big fellow and stop him, but he shook us off and started climbing into the boxes behind third base. Hug grabbed a bat and gave me one, and then we jumped in after him. The crowd, getting a little quieter now, made a path for the big fellow as he pushed through. Cut it out now! Fine bunch of sports you are! 16,000 against one! Now cut it out, I said! Or I'll beat all your heads in! A couple of hotheads tried to stop the big fellow, but he threw them aside with one swing of his shoulders and kept on going until he reached two tough-looking guys, the ones he'd picked as the ringleaders of the mob. Most of the fans now had stopped throwing stuff, but these two toughs kept digging into big sacks they had and coming up with eggs and bottles and even rocks, which they were heaving down toward Tim Daly. Okay, okay. Okay, you've had your fun. Now pick up your marbles and scram. Says who? Says me. Go on now, get going. Big shot, huh? I'll fix you. Come on, Danny, let him have oh, it. Babe, hey, look out. They've got nine. Hug, come on. Before Hug and I could reach him, the big fellow hammered both knife artists to their knees. And then the park cops got there. The fans were cheering the big fellow now like crazy. He stood at the plate holding up his hands. Until they quieted down. Okay. Okay, we've had our fun. Now let's play ball. And the first guy who lets out a peep at the boss, Tim Daly, has to fight me. (laughs) 
The Yankees won that ball game. But in the clubhouse afterwards, the players balled the big fellow out. Yeah, of all the prize suckers I ever saw, babe, you're the champ. You risk your life to save Tim Daly's hide in his job after the way he's been treating you. Bob's right, babe. Yeah, hold it, Hug. You too, Bob. Umpires aren't allowed in the players' quarters, Tim. Beat it. Eh, not till I say my piece, babe. You went into the stands today in uniform. You fought with a fan. That calls for an automatic fine and suspension. Now, wait. Now, you wait, a minute. wait a minute, you guys. So I'm fined and suspended, huh, Tim? Yeah, you ought to be, you big ape. But, well, well look, babe, I wasn't giving you the close ones. You should have let me take it today instead of, instead of doing what you did. You're a pretty swell guy, and, uh, well, don't get the idea I got soft and I'm going to call him special for you because I ain't. That's the way I want it. Yeah, well, just so you know, that's all. Uh, wait a minute, Tim. Huh? Why? You forgot to shake hands, tough guy. Oh. Well, well, okay, but make it snappy. I'm not supposed to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Steve Martin, thanks very much for a very exciting adventure of Babe Ruth. You're certainly welcome, Jack. And thanks to you for all you said about the Navy at the beginning of the show. I've got a lot more, Steve. For instance, I didn't mention the thing you really know about. The adventure and the fun of life in the Navy. Adventure? Where else in all the world can a young fellow find adventure to compare with what is almost routine in the Navy? Think of the places you go. The things you see and do. Egypt and the pyramids. Shanghai's famous bund the leading tower of Pisa, and the majesty of the Thames and London Bridge, the gaiety and beauty of Paris, and all of the other colorful ports Navy men visit. And a Navy man just doesn't see those places from the deck of a ship either. He has shore leave in almost every port, with money in his pocket and good companions at his side. Oh, Jack, don't tell me about adventure in the Navy. What about it, fellows? Are you fed up with life at home where nothing seems to happen? Do you want financial security? A chance for advancement? Want to be thoroughly trained in one of the Navy's valuable skills? Want to be able to retire with a lifetime income? All right, then. Think of the Navy as a career. If you're over 17, you really ought to find out about how you can be a part of this great Navy crew. Contact your local Navy recruiting officer immediately. He'll give you all the details. <laughs> Now, Steve, what's on tap for next week? Well, Jack, the big fellow liked to joke as well as anybody. But once what started out to be an innocent gag backfired into a near tragedy with the wildest results you can imagine. I want to tell you all about it next week. Adventures of Babe Ruth is written by Ben Peter Freeman, produced by Woody Close, directed by Ronald Dawson, and presented by the United States Navy. Navy.